Muriel Siebert is known as the first lady of finance and for good reason. In 1967, she became the first woman to own a seat on the New York Stock Exchange. Over the years, she has seen market trends come and go, and Washington politics stay the same. She is currently president and CEO of Muriel Siebert and Company, and she joins me to discuss the debt ceiling, the economy, and the markets. Muriel, welcome to Bottom Line. Pleasure to have you on. Pleasure to be here. You're a loyal Republican. And you are at odds with a lot of members of the GOP right now because you believe that in any discussion of a debt ceiling increase, tax increases should be part of the discussion. Why? Well, we have to raise revenues. We just cannot keep issuing debt without reducing it, finding a way to reduce it. And you reduce it by either reducing spending or spend uh, taxes. So should increase. there be should there be a combination of the two, the spending cuts and the tax increases? I don't know all of the numbers that go into our current deficit. I'd like to study those numbers to see what could be reduced. I think what's going on now is a disgrace. I see partisan hatred, and mm. I don't believe in partisan hatred. I think this is a wonderful country and we have to think of the people. And we've got 9%, over 9% of our people do not have jobs. Right. And I take that very seriously. Well, in an interview earlier today on Bloomberg Surveillance, the Arizona Republican Senator John McCain was talking about the debt ceiling talks and he said he can't imagine the U.S. defaulting. Is that even an option? Will the U.S. default on its debts or will they come to an agreement? Well, if they don't come to an agreement, and if they're forced to default, it's, as Bernanke said today, it's a calamity. It's a catastrophe. A lot of people are saying that the administration and Mr. Bernanke are just crying wolf, that it might not be that bad. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, we're paying more for money now. The rates have gone down, but we're paying more for credit default insurance. Mm -hmm. We're paying more for other things. Where are we going to be able to borrow money? We owe $14 trillion. That's a lot of money. Well, speaking of concerns, as you know, yesterday, Moody's placed America's credit rating under review for a downgrade. What are the implications of this for the U.S. markets and for the global markets? Well, it be, first of all, Finance is global today. Money is global. Yeah. Trade is global. The world is global. We, we're not a little isolated company. So in this instance, we don't say the market. We say the markets, and we mean a global expanse. Exactly. We were very fortunate. They did a superb job in saving the banks. I was superintendent of banks for five years, and I was frightened. Yeah, here in New York State, right. Yes. And... We have to see that the implications would be so bad. There are, our banks own some paper, other banks abroad own our paper, by yeah. paper I mean debt, and they couldn't collect. It would mature and there would be no money to pay them off. Okay, that's the financial implications. Talk to me about the social implications because yesterday I spoke to doc Dr. Robert Heller, the former Fed governor. He said if there is a default, uh, a default, he said things could get so bad as to result in rioting in the streets. Is that a possibility? Will there, will there be social upheaval if we default on our debts? Well, if some people can't get paid, that was his concern. If some people can't get paid, they're not going to go around smiling. <laughs> We're going to have to deal with that. When you talked about a moment ago about the toxic atmosphere in Washington, is it as bad as you've ever seen it? I've never seen it this bad. They should have sat down before. They should have had some kind of an agreement. Here it is less than a month away, and it's hitting the newspapers and every channel, and we don't have a solution yet. Is it going to go down to the wire? It, it, unless they work fast, it's going to go down to the wire. Hopefully, we'll get together on some basis. But this is a serious thing. This is the country's financing. China warned us today.
Yeah. That's serious. China owns more of our treasury bonds than any other country. Ms. Siebert, listening in, along with myself, those comments from Secretary Geithner and uh, Majority Leader Reid, what did you think? They both mean business. They're both correct. They have to do something. It's got to be passed by August 2nd. It's nothing that can be put off. They have to, they should be forced to stay in those rooms until they pass something. Just like uh, negotiate union negotiations between labor, labor and management, lock them in a room and keep them there until they agree to something? Well, that's what I'd like to do. Otherwise, I don't think that if we default, I don't think anyone that is currently in the Senate or the House should be returned to office. It's that bad? Yes, it is. It will affect the world. It will affect our position for a long time and as far as the leader in finance, who's going to buy our bonds? Muriel Siebert joining us on set to talk about Secretary Geithner and the Democratic leadership and the discussions for the debt ceiling debate. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thanks so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you.